O'Reilly. Oh, 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 O'Reilly. Riley, you're a good person. You're a kind person. I think you would be awesome to hang out with. But the stuff you say on this platform when you discuss feminism, you are hurting the LGBT community. And you are hurting people who want actual social justice. The title of your video is Trans Women Are Not Biologically Male. It just sort of reminds me of people who make videos entitled Black People Can't Be Racist. And then the whole video is describing how people are so wrong for using the dictionary and historical definitions of the word racism. I will critique the actual points you make in the video, but that title, come on. You can't make a video with that title and expect to get reasonable responses. It's like you are wanting to be a victim. Look, look, I'm being harassed. Society may never be ready for this stuff, but they're certainly not ready for it now. And you're still pushing this stuff out. Right now is not the time to double down on the stuff that makes the left look crazy, okay? Please, please stop. Please stop hurting the LGBT community. Stop hurting America. Okay. I know there are people who don't think being transgender is a thing, and this video is not for them. This video is for the people who say, yes, trans women are women, but they are still biologically male. Because while their intentions might be good, the impact that these words have is actually very harmful. Trans women are not male, and saying that they are allows some people to justify the mistreatment of trans people. So I'm going to assume that you already really believe that trans women are women. If you don't believe that, this video isn't meant to convince you. So you don't want to address the people that are really the problem problem, you'd rather address the people who are your allies so they'll turn away from you. Maybe instead of leaving an angry comment, you could go do some research into what it means to be transgender. I will leave some links in the description to some very good resources to get you started. Your links included a Lacey Green video and a link to the Everyday Feminism website. Come on now. Alright, so let's say that you're trying to be a good ally to trans people and you heard that sex and gender are two different things. Sex is biological and gender is a social construct. That's not entirely true. Sex and gender are two different things, but they're both partly social constructs, just in different ways. For a long time, gender has been assigned to people based on their perceived sex. A doctor looks at a baby's genitals and determines what gender it will be raised as. Please stop that. Please. Doctors say what the sex of the baby is. It's not an absolute declaration that this person should grow up as this gender. Please stop demonizing doctors. In our culture, this used to be unquestionable fact. You were raised as the gender you were assigned at birth, and being transgender wasn't an option. This doesn't mean that trans people didn't exist, we've existed as long as humans have existed, but being transgender was not a mainstream topic of discussion. Today, many of us recognize that gender is far more complicated than a person's perceived sex, and we're able to acknowledge that people can be transgender. Gender was a social construct before, and still is now, but how we construct it has changed. Now we can say that your gender is based on how you identify, because we realized that basing gender on perceived sex was a Oppressive. I wouldn't say it's because it's oppressive, unless you're going to say that people assuming that most people are straight is oppressive to gay people. Again, I'm not really talking about society at large because a lot of people still don't fully understand what it means to be transgender, but I mean within trans accepting communities. However, even within these communities, binary sex has, for some reason, stuck around as the same kind of unquestionable fact that we used to think gender was. I've made a video before about intersex conditions and how sex isn't a perfect binary, but for now let's just talk about what it means to be male or female. Intersex is rare and could be considered a genetic mutation or a, I don't know, a recessive gene or that sort of thing, you know? It, it's not standard. Because I would argue that sex needs to go through the same change that gender has already gone through. It's not a static fact. There are only so many variations, and some of those variations are so incredibly rare that it shouldn't be mentioned in a way that seems like it's, oh, it's just an everyday occurrence. No, no, just no. 
It's a social construct. I'm sure that some people are having this knee-jerk reaction that sex is based on biology and you can't change a person's biology, but that's exactly what we used to say about gender. That could be the base for anyone trying to shove forth anything. You could say, well, you know, we used to feel this way about gender, so, you know, anything goes. Now, I know you're not saying anything goes, but this whole thing on biological sex is a social construct. I mean, that's really stretching things. That's, that's taking it too far. Sex is a way of categorizing humans based on a combination of a few traits, chromosomes, genitals, gonads, hormones, and secondary sex characteristics like facial hair or breast development. It's also based off of the idea that someone, as long as they don't have some sort of a genetic disorder, or they don't have some sort of disease, or they didn't have to have parts of their body modified or removed, that they're able to have children. They're able to produce children. That's part of this as well. Most people never have their chromosomes tested. They're not tested at birth and they're not tested at regular checkups. Unless your doctor suspects that something might be wrong with your chromosomes, you'll probably never have them tested in your life. And you certainly can't tell a person's chromosomes by looking at them. Whether you can tell by looking at someone isn't the issue here. And whether or not people normally have their chromosomes tested or not doesn't really make much of a difference. The chromosomes tell the story. Now, there are variations in chromosomes, obviously, but for the most part, chromosomes tell this sort of thing. Hormones are also not visible without a test, and genitals and gonads are usually not visible most of the time. So the way that most people have of determining someone's sex is simply their secondary sex characteristics that developed in puberty. Before puberty, children with penises and children with vaginas are really not that different. It's the rush of hormones around puberty that begins to develop the secondary sex characteristics. People with penises tend to develop facial hair, gain muscle mass, and get a deeper voice. People with vaginas tend to develop breasts, get wider hips, and have more subcutaneous fat. But these are not perfect differentiators of sex. Some people with penises don't develop much, if any, facial hair, while some develop beards, and the amount of facial hair that they have doesn't make them more or less male. The same goes for people with vaginas. Some of them will develop large breasts, some of them will develop small breasts, but neither of those is more or less female. There are these physical characteristics that are typically less female or typically less male. There's a lot of overlap between these characteristics. Some people with vaginas will have deeper voices than some people with penises, and some people with penises will be shorter than some people with vaginas. It's not like all people with penises fit into one box and all people with vaginas fit into another box. It's like they're all in the same box, but people with penises tend to hang out on one side and people with vaginas tend to hang out on the other. And that's why these declarations are typically made by people, because these things are common. Plus, all of these secondary sex characteristics can be changed, either through hormones or surgery. When people assigned female at birth take testosterone, they tend to get deeper voices and grow more facial hair, while people assigned male at birth can take estrogen and develop breasts and more subcutaneous fat. And if puberty blockers are taken before hormones, a person assigned female at birth might never experience a female natal puberty, or vice versa for people assigned male at birth. See, this is where I draw the line. Okay, when I was little, I wanted to be a girl. I just found out recently that my brother, when he was little, wanted to be a girl. Now, some of this is the messed up way that we were raised, okay? But nevertheless, I wanted to be a girl. Really, really wanted it. It was just something, wow, if this could just be possible. Now I'm really, really glad that the type of narrative that's going around now wasn't going around when I was little. So the sex you were assigned at birth doesn't necessarily tell you what secondary sex characteristics you'll have later in life. That means that telling someone you know their sex based on their secondary sex characteristics is just not true. I like being fat. I got fat on purpose because I hated being thin. I had body dysphoria when I was thin. Okay, I hated being thin. My genetics probably say that I should be thinner. I kind of force the issue. Now, for those wondering, I don't eat unhealthy foods. I try to eat really healthy foods. I just eat a lot of them. But I did what I could to change my body so I'm more comfortable with it. Should I declare that, well, you know, um, you can't tell whether someone wanted to be heavy based off of their genes? I, I mean... <sighs> You know, and this sort of thing could be argued for these other kin people. People saying, well, you know, uh, 
being human is a social construct. There are people actually trying to argue this. Would you argue against them? Would you say that they're hurting the trans community? Would you say they're hurting the LGBT community? I would, just like I think that you are with this stuff. But you still think you can tell someone's sex based on their genitals or gonads? Well, genitals can be changed with surgery. Some people assigned male at birth have vaginas, thanks to a surgery called vaginoplasty. Some people assigned female at birth have penises, thanks to a surgery called phalloplasty. So genitals aren't a great indicator. And gonads, so ovaries or testes, are often removed in the case of testicular or ovarian cancer. But if a woman has her ovaries removed due to cancer, is she no longer female? If a man has his testes removed due to cancer, is he no longer male? I don't think so, and I don't think you can say that gonads don't define a person's sex without believing that. So out of the five ways we have of determining someone's sex, four of those five, hormones, secondary sex characteristics, genitals, and gonads, cannot be accurately used to determine someone's sex. But chromosomes can, and that's what people generally use when they make the declarations that they do. For example, if someone was assigned male at birth but took puberty blockers and hormones and had a vaginoplasty, they would have female hormones, secondary sex characteristics, and genitals. So three of their five ways of determining sex would be female. They wouldn't have male or female gonads at that point, and let's assume their chromosomes are XY. That means that three-fifths of the sex criteria point to female, and only one-fifth points to male. And if you believe that sex is an unchanging biological fact, that couldn't be possible, but it is. Here's where people say, well, you can't change your chromosomes, and yeah, that's correct. But if you want to argue that sex is entirely determined by chromosomes, then you're arguing against the definition of what we call biological sex. Because sex has never been only about chromosomes, it's been about all five of these traits. Chromosomes are the most important part. Right now, we can't change that. But in the future, we may have the technology so we can. And tell me, what good does dividing people based on their chromosomes do? If chromosomes don't determine your hormones, secondary sex characteristics, genitals, or gonads... In nature, they do. Someone can change these things artificially, but in nature, they do. What purpose do they serve in differentiating people? The answer is, they serve no purpose. Well, I guess that about wraps it up. Nature serves no purpose. Now, I know that's not what you're trying to say, but that's essentially what you're saying. Now, I'm not saying that all things that are natural are good and all things that are not natural are not good. Most of the things that we do in society could be considered not natural. Then another way to look at it, though, is anything that humans can possibly do could be considered a natural thing. So... There's no reason to divide XX people and XY people. That is an arbitrary distinction that has no effect on how the person looks or behaves or navigates the world. How someone looks or behaves or navigates the world has very little to do with their biological sex. Sure, there's a little bit that has to do with it, but very little. You can't know someone's chromosomes by looking at them, and even if you could, it wouldn't give you any useful information about the person. It would tell you their biological sex. Now, whether someone's biological sex is important or not, that's a different conversation altogether. And I don't think someone's biological sex is very important. That's the point I'm trying to make. Sex is not a biological fact because it is determined by things that are largely changeable, and the only part of it that is unchangeable doesn't have any real-world effect. So it is just as much a social construct as gender is. But I'm not saying that for a trans person to be trans, they have to have all the surgeries and take all the hormones. A trans person is trans if they claim that identity, because a cis person doesn't become trans when they have their ovaries removed due to cancer. And a trans person isn't cis just because they can't afford hormones. And just because a child, a male child, thinks they're a girl, or really, really feels they're a girl, or really, really wants to be a girl, doesn't mean that they're a girl. They're too young before they reach puberty to really know this sort of thing. Having a vagina doesn't make you a female, regardless of whether you were born with it or got it through surgery. Gender is about your identity, and therefore, so is sex. So because you added the words, and therefore, it suddenly makes it true? Come on now, that's, that's disingenuous. The fact that sex is so fluid means that thinking of sex as a binary, unmoving fact of life is just wrong. It's wrong because it's wrong. It doesn't feel right, so therefore it's wrong. So if you're a trans woman, you're female. If you're a trans man, you're male. And if you're neither a man nor a woman, then you're neither male nor female. Biological sex has to undergo the same paradigm shift that gender did. No, it doesn't. Not unless you want to do the same thing later on to, well, you know, being human is really just a social construct. No, no, just stop. 
Please stop. Please. You're hurting trans people. You're hurting the LGBT community. We need to start thinking about it as a social construct rather than an inarguable fact. Because when people say that a trans woman is biologically male, they use that as a way to attack trans people. There is no proof that being gay is genetic. But when people say that, you know, well, that can be used against gay people. Does that mean that someone is bigoted and is a terrible person for saying it? Or are they just being honest? There, there is no proof that being gay is genetic. Whether science makes your narrative look bad or not doesn't really make any difference. They use it as an excuse to exclude us from bathrooms, locker rooms, and other women's spaces. Maybe instead of trying to deny science or trying to demonize people for not agreeing with your narrative, maybe you should just push for co-ed bathrooms, you know? Also, you have stated in other videos that you are non-binary. So, what is someone supposed to do at that point? Well, you know, you can use either bathroom. That doesn't work very well either. That would, I'm sorry, that would give you special rights to be able to use either bathroom you want while other people cannot. Well, you say, well, I'm, I'm non-binary, so I can use either one. No. Push for co-ed bathrooms. Then this whole, this whole kind of debate is over. It's just a more subtle and more socially acceptable way of discriminating against trans people. You might mean well by saying that sex and gender are two different things, but I think it's important to emphasize that both are social constructs based on your identity. Please stop hurting the LGBT community. This video is a part of my Feminism with Riley series that I'm doing in collaboration with Everyday Feminism, a website dedicated to helping you stand up to and break down everyday oppression. How much is that propaganda website paying you to peddle this nonsense? Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay. Ready? Right. Fucking thing sucks! Okay. We'll do it live. Okay.